On a distant planet somewhere in the universe, a bounty hunter Trap arrives at a local bar. There is music, there is alcohol. Trap heads to the bar and inquires to the first person she sees about the location of a person named Takashi Kovacs. The person whom she talks to appears to look exactly the same as the famous writer Edgar Allan Poe, who should have been dead for over 300 years now, but Trap doesn't seem concerned. In a world where bodies can be created to transfer consciousness, it isn't a surprise that someone would have the body of a famous writer. She calmly asks him of Takashi, but this man seems a bit disoriented, a little too glitchy for a human. He doesn't seem to give a proper reply and simply asks why she needs to see him. Trip tells him that Takashi owes a lot of money, or in the words of this world, units, and she was here to get it from him. The man tells her that he heard something else about Takasi. He heard that Takasi was just a great warrior who was in search of his long-lost lover, Quelchrist Falconer. As they converse, suddenly a woman comes to the bar and shoes off the man. He was an AI who instantly vanishes away. Just then, a man walks into the bar, claiming that he had some units for Takasi, all the depths that he had owned Takasi. Since he doesn't know what Takasi looked like, he asks Takasi to come and take his units. All of a sudden, three men come forth claiming that they are the one, Takasi. Since people's bodies are no longer an identity tree, no one cannot refute the other's claims. The man simply tells them to fight amongst themselves and get the units. All he wants is to get rid of the dead. He walks out leaving the suitcase behind. Just as the man exits the premises of the bar, he is confronted by the singer. The lady was the infamous Takasi Kovacs. She demands the guy to pay up since in the bar he had left a suitcase with nothing or actually a bomb. The guy smiles and hands her the units but it's only half of what he had owed Takasi. He claims that he has more units but he needs help with a job. Before Takasi can reply, a bullet strikes the man on his head and he falls down, dead. Trap was the one who had fired the shot. She comes forth with a proposal from her boss, Horace Axley, who wants to hire Takasi for a job. Takasi instantly recognizes the name to be one of the Mets and declines the job offer no matter the units that were offered, but Trep won't take no for an answer. She shoots Takasi and transfers his stack to a virtual room. Takasi wakes up in an orange cube-like room, bound to a chair. Horace Axley stands before him and offers him a new advanced sleep in return for the job done. What Horace doesn't realize is that Takasi was once a part of the most elite warriors. Takasi easily subdues Horace and turns the interrogation on its head. A scared Horace claims that he knows the location of Quelchrist Falconer and tells Takasi that he will tell her location if he helps him. He claims that a war is happening where he lives, and he fears for his life. All he wants is for Takasi to protect him, and he will get the location to his lover. Takasi isn't fully convinced, but decides to help as he needs all leads to quell Chris. When Takasi wakes up in his new body, he feels the disorientation of the stack transfer and cannot control his movements. Just as he stabilizes himself, someone slams his head into the mirror and he once again loses consciousness. When Takasi wakes up, the whole place has been destroyed and Horus has been left for dead. He rushes to Horus to find the man grasping for breath, black veins running through his neck. Horus dies before he could tell him anything at all. Realizing that all this could be blamed on him if he stayed there for too long, Takasi decides to head out. He calls upon his AI, Poe, the same Alan Edgar Poe one from before. The two of them watch the vicinity that they are in. It was Harlan Takasis' hometown. Once Takasi had sworn that he would never come back here, but his fate had brought him back. The two walk around town to find that not a lot has changed since they had left. Harlan was still a place plagued by war and poverty. There was one change, however. The leader of Harlan, Conrad, had left his seat in favor of his daughter, Danica. As soon as the two reach the city center, Danica announces a temporary ceasefire between the Harlan forces and the resistance. 
they have reached an agreement with the leader Joshua Kemp of the Quellus faction and starting immediately Harlan was in peace. Takasi and Poe then head in search for a place to live and reach their old house. The whole place was now occupied by the Harlan Yakuza and almost immediately he encounters them in his house. The leader of the group confronts Takasi and asks him to leave unless he is a death wish but Takasi is adamant. He claims that he is Tanisada Hideki, the owner of this place. The Yakuza realizes that the sleeve that Takasi had been using was a really expensive one and they could sell it for a huge price and soon a fight ensues. Takasi is able to beat the Yakuza goons easily but he is subdued by Yukito who puts him at gunpoint and takes him away. Takasi is brought before the real Taniseta Hideki by Yukito, who wants the man to declare the punishment fit for Tasuki. However, Hideki doesn't punish Tasuki. Instead, he reprimands his own grandson for not recognizing Taseki and his abilities. Taseki was part of the greatest warrior named Envoys, who had once served Hideki during the Great Battle of Stronghold. He was his great friend. Hideki sends his grandson and his goons away and tells them to clear the space for Taseki to stay. Taseki thanks Hideki and inquires if he knows anything about the incident with Horus, but Hideki has no clue all he knows is that he hadn't called the hit on Horus. Taseki returns back to his room and ponders his life's choices. For so long he had been chasing after Quelchris without even knowing if she was still alive or not. Suddenly, Quelchris appears before him a fragment of his imagination, but Quelchris tells him something important. She tells him that even bodies can store some information, some data from their lives. Not everything can be transferred by stacks. Even though Takasi knows this was just something he had made up, he decides to test it out. He stabbed himself with a glass piece right next to his chest and suddenly remembers back to the time when he had woken up in Horace's place. After he was slammed into the mirror, he had been stabbed there by none other than Quelchris Falconer herself. She was the one who had attacked Horus. The next day, men of the special forces, Wedge, arrive at the death scene of Axley Horus. Detective Lorcan, who had been working on the case, doesn't understand why special forces were sent for a civilian murder case. But the leader, Colonel Carrera, doesn't give him any details other than the fact that he was taking over the case. He asked Lorcan to show him the tank which Takasi's stack had been transferred to the new sleeve. The special forces carefully check every nook and corner of the area in hopes that no data is misplaced. However, there is no clue of any murderer or the culprit behind the scene. The resleeving appears to be done calmly suggesting it was done by choice and all the weapons there were registered to Horus, meaning either he had been killed with his own gun or the killers left no mark behind except the pile of bodies and the blood-stained walls. Morgan thinks the person who was sleeved must be someone who was from a war background with some major PTSD because of the mess they had left behind. He thinks the guy was hired by Axley as a bodyguard but ended up killing the man instead. The colonel doesn't think this is the case. Just as he's escorted back into the crime scene, for almost no reason at all, the colonel and his men slaughter the detectives. Back at his place, Takasi has almost given up hope. The last thing that Quelchris had told him was that she was not looking for him and this made him a bit disappointed. Poe, however, does not think that this woman was Quelchris. Someone must have created a look-alive sleeve and was walking in doing these things. They, however, didn't have any way to confirm the suspicion. The one man who knew about all this, Horus, was dead and his stack was transferred to a backup in Laminar. Poe comes up with a plan. What if they could track down Trep since she was working with Horus? She probably knows who this person was. He goes ahead and pulls up all the criminal records of the people with the highest bounty. Since Horus's account was now frozen, the bounty hunter must be looking to get some bounties to survive. Poe glitches repeatedly while he performs the task, but manages to get Takasi the list of five highest bounties. The random glitching of Poe had started to bug Takasi, who thinks that if he malfunctions, both him and the AI would be at a risk of discovery. Poe, however, tells him that if he reboots, he would forget every memory he had of their travels and he doesn't want to let that go. He knows that there is something important in his memory, but just cannot retrieve it at the moment. 
Takasi doesn't care. He just wants Poe to reboot. He tells Poe that it's the best option and leaves to hunt down these bounties in hopes to stumble to trap. Elsewhere, Captain Carrera appears before the Harlan leader, Danica. He informs her that Horus was dead, all of his backup had also been destroyed, and the people responsible for this was probably the Quellist group. He thinks that they will never hold the peace that Danica had proposed. Danica, however, is adamant that the Harlan people are in favor of peace and not war. Besides, the Special Forces had no authority on their planet. Carrera calmly reminds her that it was not her planet. This planet, including all others in the discovered universe belonging to Protrekwari, responsible for the murder was using a Special Forces sleeve of one of the members of his own team. He needed to track him down. Back at a shady illegal store, Trep arrives in search for one of the highest bounty, Rob, but instead she finds Takasi waiting for her. Rob arrives soon as well, but Takasi deals with him as soon as things go south. He slices open the guy's neck and grabs his stack. Takasi had apparently been to all five of the highest bounties and gathered their stacks. He offers Trep all five of these if she gives him the information he needs. Trep takes Takasi to her hideout and tells him that Horus had partners who she had heard talking about some intruder using an illegal sleeve. Horus's partners, Anton Darobe and Haruki Okado, were the ones who could give him further clues. She asks him if he wants to work with her in exchange for her help to track the men down, but Takasi denies her. He doesn't work with others, and besides, he had other ways of getting the information. Back at Takasi's house, Poe has managed to get all the info about Takasi's sleeve things like bio-tracker weapons, enhancements, etc. that were the perks which were pre-installed into it. Since he has some issues with remembering, he had been using footnotes to write down this information. Takasi arrives just then explaining everything that had just happened and tells him to find the two men, Durov and Okada. Poe, however, does not seem to remember what they were talking about just a second ago. This frustrates Takasi, who heads out commanding the AI to either fix himself by rebooting or be prepared to be abandoned. During all this, Poe forgot to tell him that his sleeve had a bio tracker and could be traced wherever he went. Takasi meets up with Hideko once again in search of the information. Hideko tells him that the two men frequent a club in the Soul Market. The Soul Market was a place where stacks of abandoned people were sold back to their friends and families. In the market was a man named Zemetain who digitalized the memories of lost stacks and sold them to the people for enjoyment purposes. Takasi would find those two here. Like Hideko said, Takasi finds the two men enjoying their time there and quickly manages to become their acquaintance. The two are intoxicated and quickly give up the fact that Horus was a madman who thought Quelchris was coming to hunt him back from the grave. They are happy that he was out of the sleeve and somewhere else not bothering them with stupid stories. Takasi tells them that Horus was actually dead with all his backups erased as well. Takasi tells them that he can protect them if they show him the thing that convinced Horus that Quelchris was alive and after him. The two men take Takasi to a private room and show him the memory of Quelchris crashing and killing everyone around. Just then, Quelchris or whoever was using her sleeve shows up crashing the party. She immediately kills Okada and Durov within seconds, but Takasi doesn't let her escape. The two engage in a battle with Takasi adamant to know who she really was. Mid-battle, Takasi realizes that it was actually Quelchris. He was confused, but the two had little time someone else had entered the premises, and Takasi asked Quelchris to flee as he held the intruders back. Colonel Carrera walks in alongside his men and sees Takasi alone. Takasi tries to take control, but somehow he cannot do anything. The sleeve he was using was the same one that Carrera had been looking for. His body was a property of the Protrectorite Special Forces. Takasi was in a deep mess. Subscribe and hit that like button to help grow our channel. And don't forget to click the notification icon so you won't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.